Hello, welcome back everyone. It's Professor Gray here. Uh, it's time for week three of our practical English class. Uh, I hope you've had a good uh, weekend. Uh, uh, the emails that I got from you last week were very good. Some of you finished quickly. Others of you took around the 30 minutes uh, I suggested and a few of you were more than 30 minutes. But as I told you, don't worry too much about that. Last week, was a sort of introduction uh, to the reading section. The important thing is you did the work. You watched the video, you did the work, did your best. Now we're gonna go over it and we're gonna talk about some reading strategies that you should use for academic reading. And we're gonna begin the learning process of how to read academically and how to read for TOEFL reading comprehension. If your time was a little bit uh, slow and you found it confusing, don't worry, okay? Right at the beginning, we were hit hard with a tough exercise. This was very scientific. It was not an easy reading. The questions were not easy. It was very comprehensive. Now you haven't studied TOEFL yet, so this was difficult for most of you. That's fine. As I told you, this is a, a beginner's class, so don't worry if you found it difficult. Now we're going to go over it. We're going to start the general learning of reading. And we're also going to begin um, studying in the units, the chapters one by one, where we go back to the basics and work our way up. All right. So whatever you found difficult today, it was just the beginning. We're going to work our way back up to there and everything will make sense step by step, week by week. All right. Good. Let's begin. You have your, um, your notes uh, that I sent you. I always, I always recommend that you print them out and refer to them while, I, uh, while you watch the lecture video. I think that's the best way to do it. Um, also in the notes, you know, there's some important vocabulary that might be helpful and that sort of thing. Um, okay, uh, let's look at it. Aggression. Now, first of all, uh, you know, you're taking a test, you're timing yourself, uh, you know, you're nervous in a real test. So timing is so important. I'm going to always emphasize timing uh, when we do uh, review tests. Not every exercise, but review tests, right? Because you want to put yourself in as much of a testing situation as you can. Mm -hmm. So for this one, remember the rule, 1.5 minutes per question. Okay, 20 questions, 30 minutes for everything. Aggression. Now, the first thing I'm going to explain is the structure. A, uh, an academic essay has a specific structure. It has an introduction, and it has a body, and sometimes a conclusion. This one does not have um, an actual conclusion. Uh, it's been edited out due to uh, the limit of space and words in a TOEFL reading exercise. But it has a clear introduction. And in the introduction, the writer will explain the, the topic. Here, the topic is aggression. They'll give you a definition, uh, an explanation, and some background information. They start off general, and they get more and more and more specific. General to specific in the introduction. The introduction usually finishes with the thesis statement. That's the main point. Every essay must have a thesis statement. No thesis, no essay. So the thesis statement in a, in a general academic paper comes at the end of the introduction. Not always, but that's the general rule. Now, that's also what I call a bridge. It connects the introduction to the body. That bridge tells you what's coming in the essay. It's very, very important to notice that uh, thesis statement because it's the key point of the essay, but also it tells you how it, what's coming next and how it will be explained to you. Usually, the introduction is one paragraph. In this case, it's two. Some writers use one and some use two. You have to get used to both. But either way, the thesis is at the end of the introduction, be it one or two paragraphs. The body will then 
connect to that thesis statement. Remember, it's a bridge, and the body usually has three main, uh, two or three main points, and each one is a body paragraph, and each one connects back to the thesis. Within each body paragraph, there's a main point supporting the thesis, and there are uh, smaller uh, details supporting that main point. So you have thesis on level one, and then you have supporting uh, key points of support on level two. Those key points are the key uh, topics of each paragraph, and they support the thesis. And then under them, you have level three, you have the smaller details uh, and smaller points that support each key point. So it's like a web, everything is all connected, like building a house or the internet, everything connects and everything supports that thesis statement. Okay, so let's just uh, read uh, the passage together now and follow along and I'll, should talk to, I'll talk about the structure and I'll talk about some, you know, the answers of course. But in your notes, notice what I've done here. I've, I've sort of made uh, a structure, uh, shown you the structure. If you're learning academic reading um, and it's new and you're having, you know, find, you're finding it a bit more difficult, always read for the structure, even take notes, take time, take longer and get used to um, organizing the key points as you read. Now, a good reader does this while he or she reads, right? To be a good academic reader, this is how you read. You, you read for structure, uh, you read for organization. Okay, so try to see this while we review it. Okay, you have your main point, and then you have your two key points here, biological and learned, and then you have the supporting details underneath. It will all sort of uh, become easier to see as we review it. Okay, aggressive behavior is any behavior that is intended to. Intend, that's a key word right away. Intended to means meant to, on purpose, deliberate cause injury, pain, suffering, damage, or destruction. While aggressive behavior is often thought of as purely physical, okay, you know, we think of aggression as fighting, that kind of thing. Sure, it is, but it can also be verbal. Screaming, shouting, belittling, making somebody feel small, little, humiliating, humiliate someone, are uh, aimed at causing harm and suffering or also aggress aggression. So. Aggression doesn't have to be physical, it can be verbal too. What is key to the definition? Now notice in a good academic paper, the, the, uh, the writer gives you sort of a definition of the main point here, aggression, is that it's intentional. That's the key point and notice the word is highlighted. Uh, intentional means on purpose, not an accident. Of course, you, if you bump into somebody by accident, that's not aggression. That's just the, you know, you're not paying attention. That's a mistake. Okay, those happen. And we know that. But intentionally bumping someone, that's being aggressive. Okay, notice some of the, uh, uh, um, the grammar here. Uh, one thing in our course, you will learn a lot of uh, academic English, which means some different vocabulary, uh, some certain grammar structures, that we don't often use uh, when we speak in a casual situation. I think every language is like this. In Korean, you'll speak to each other, your friends one way, but when you do academic writing or maybe some uh, formal speech, you will use some different structures. And, um, but you wouldn't use them in a fun conversation with your friends. It would sound a bit strange, I think. Well here, be it, uh, be it means whether it is. Okay, whenever harm is inflicted, be it physical or verbal, whether it is physical or verbal, whether X or Y. Um, I wouldn't use this structure talking with my friends. They would kind of like, why are you talking like a grammar book? They would think it was strange, but you need to know it. Remember, we're focusing on academic English, so you need to learn these structures. And I'll point them out. There's usually one or two in each uh, passage. Questions about the causes of aggression have long been of concern. Uh, okay, long been of concern. Again, it's a bit formal. It just means they have uh, studied it for a long time. They have uh, tried to understand it uh, for a long time, have long been for a long time. Social and biological scientists. 
Now, here we go. This is the second paragraph of the introduction. This right here is your thesis statement. You must always notice it, always. And I've told you when you do your, if you quickly look over the passage first, you read the first sentences of each paragraph, you must also read the thesis uh, statement. Hey, okay, that's right here. Theories about the causes of aggression cover a broad spectrum, a wide range, okay? Wide range. Ranging, notice the connection here, okay? A good writer uses synonyms. A bad writer uses the same word again and again. Synonym means different words, same meaning. Broad spectrum ranging from. A spectrum is a range, like the, the color spectrum, a rainbow. Biological or instinctive, automatic, natural, emphases, to those that portray, that show aggression as a learned behavior. Automatic, natural, learned. Nature or nurture. In English, we often say nature versus nurture. And it's a scientific debate about many things in us, our behavior. Do we learn to be a certain way? Do we learn to be aggress aggressive? Or is it just our nature? Is it human nature? Is it automatic? Well, scientists debate this, and they still are debating it. Now, that's the thesis statement. So what is this? This is the bridge. Okay, this is what the essay is about. Okay, the topic is aggression. Well, okay, what does that mean? Ah, aggression must be intentional. It can be physical, it can be verbal. See how the, 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 the writer here uh, is giving you a definition, they're explaining it, they're making it clear, uh, they're narrowing it down. Then they hit you, he, she hits you with the main point, theories about aggression, and that's what's going on here. Theories about aggression, and they can be biological, nature, learned, nurture, nature or nurture. Okay, uh, number one, now I'm quickly I'm going to go over the answers. If you don't understand your answer, why is it wrong, you can email me and ask me. Or maybe you got it right and you don't know why you got it right. Sure email and ask. Okay, I, I can't go over every answer, every question in detail. It would take forever, but I'll tell you the answer and why it's the answer. And then it's up to you to ask questions for anything you, you don't understand clearly. In your email to me, you're always welcome to ask questions about the work. Uh, not defined. So which one is not? Well, B, yes, C, yes, D, yes, A, no. So A is the right answer. Inflicting pain, causing pain accidentally. No, it must be intentional. Accidentally is the opposite of intentionally. So A is wrong, therefore A is right, because the question says not defined. Number one, A. Number two, uh, again, look for synonyms. Here, the key word is comments. Comments means speaking, spoken. What word is similar in meaning or a synonym for that? C, verbal aggression. Verbal means spoken, speaking. Comments, verbal aggression. Number three, intentional A, deliberate, okay, on purpose, not an accident. Uh, and number four, it, this is the thesis statement. And the answer is C, various theories, okay? Uh, theories about the ca uh, causes of aggression cover a broad spectrum, a wide range. A wide range means many. From way over here to way over here, there are many. Therefore, various, many different theories, various theories. Um, attribute it to, attribute X to Y, say that Y causes X. Okay, attribute it to either natural or learned causes. Okay, natural or learned, nature versus nurture, uh, um, biological, instinctive, or learned. Okay, natural or learned. Now, attribute X to Y. Y causes X. Agre uh, learned things cause aggression. Natural instinct causes aggression. Um, I attribute my A plus in the class to uh, working hard, okay? Working hard in the class caused the A plus, okay? Attribute. Um, so number four, when you get a question like number four, you need to uh, find the answer that uh, is basically the, a restatement of the shaded sentence. Now, 
As I've told you, every question type, there's a chapter in the book focusing on it. So for now, I'll give you a brief idea of the questions and the answers, but as we study, you will learn in deeper detail how, what these questions are asking you and how to find the answer best. Number five, uh, displacement is D, directed outward. Okay, let's go to paragraph three. Sorry, I should have done that first. Uh, uh, numerous theories, notice, notice how the connection here, numerous theories. What is this about? Theories about aggression. Paragraph three, perfect bridge. Numerous theories are based on the idea that it is inherent and natural. Inherent, instinctive, automatic, natural. Now, what's going on? What does this sentence tell us? Paragraph three is the first body paragraph, and it's talking about the first topic, um, natural, inherent, instinctive theories of aggression. Aggression has been explained as an instinct that is directed externally. Okay, direct channel, to channel or direct something, externally, outside, away, out, X, like exit, okay? Um, D directed outward, externally outward, channel, directed, directed. Look for these restatements, these synonyms. Number five, D. Um, a process called displacement, and it has been noted that aggressive impulses, kind of reaction, automatic, you know, when the doctor hits your knee and you kick, that's a kind of impulse. Um, it's an automatic reaction, it's natural. Again, channel, channeled uh, toward a specific a person, uh, group or person may be expressed indirectly through socially acceptable activities such as sports and competition in a process called catharsis. Now, to channel something is to direct it, like TV channel, okay? The signal is into one number, one uh, frequency, radio channel. Uh, it comes from nature. A channel is where you have a, a body of water and the water is channeled, is directed through a narrow area, right? And when it's nature, it's called a channel, but when it's man-made, it's called a canal. The word canal is really the same word as channel. It, co it comes from the same Latin root, canal, uh, channel, canal, and they almost sound and look the same. One is man-made, one is made by nature. Um, anyway, uh, that's to direct something in a certain way. Number six, inferred. Inferred means stated indirectly, okay? It doesn't state directly, it sort of hints or indirectly states that A, it's a positive process. Positive is good. Does it say good? It says socially acceptable. That means positive, that means good, okay? If you're angry and you punch somebody, no, not socially acceptable, no good. If you're angry and you work out in the gym, ah, Good. Or you're angry and you go hiking, you get rid of that energy, good. Any, that's okay, that's socially acceptable, that's positive. Um, uh, biological or instinctive theories of aggression have also been put forth, suggested, put forth, bit formal uh, phrase here, who study the behavior of animals. Uh, a number of ethologists have, based upon their observations of animals, supported the view that aggression is an innate, notice the synonyms here, instinctive, natural, uh, inherent, and innate means in, inside, nate, natural, naturally inside you, common to humans. Number seven, now the behavior, another word for behavior is manner, okay? Look for these synonyms in the answer, D, the manner in which lions fight lions, okay? Obviously that's aggression, animal aggression, lions fighting male lions fighting other male lions, D. Uh, number eight is a bit different. Now we'll study this in great detail later, but basically you read the bold sentence and then you put that sentence in the paragraph. So first thing you do is you read the sentence. One may, for example, release aggression, get rid of aggression by joining a football team, a debate team, or even a cooking competition. Now, look for a keyword here to connect this sentence to the main paragraph. There's always a connecting word or phrase. Here it's for example, okay, for example. Example of what? Well, uh, 
joining a football team, debate team, cooking competition. These are examples of what? Are they bad? No, they're not. It's okay. Ah, they're good things. They are socially acceptable things to do. Hmm? Therefore, connect that back. These are examples of socially acceptable activities. Where does it say that? Look at 8A. Uh, 8B, uh, sorry, 8C, sorry, 8B, uh, look above 8B, uh, may be expressed indirectly through socially acceptable activities such as sports and competition. These, uh, one may, for example, mo, 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 examples of socially acceptable activities. The answer is B, because if you put it in B, these activities are examples of the sentence before, socially acceptable. Connect back. All right. Uh, moving on. Paragraph four, two different schools of thought. A school of thought is a way of thinking about something. Okay, a way of thinking. Uh, these scientists think this way. It's a school of thought. These scientists think this way, differently. They have a different way of thinking a different school of thought. D, they believe the same thing. They share or agree on the same things. Um, one group holds the view that aggression, holds the view, believes that aggression can build up spontaneously, instantly. Just sometimes things spontaneously happen. No plan, no preparation, just happens. Uh, and violent behavior will result with little or no provocation. Provocation means a reason for it, right? You know, usually if you're, if you're aggressive, it's been, you've been provoked. You know, your, your friend hits you, so you hit him back, okay? He provokes you, so mm, you act aggressively. But this, um, this theory says that you can do it without provocation, just rah, act aggressively with no reason, okay? But notice now you see we have aggressive behavior, we're still over here on, on this side, right? But now we're looking at different schools of thought, one, two, okay? One school of thought says it can happen without provocation, and the other says that it is uh, with provocation only. It is a direct response. Number 11A, of course, the aggression is a response to provocation. One group says it, you could be provoked, or it could be spontaneous. And the other group says, no, 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 only provoked. Only if aggression happens only when something causes it to happen. Somebody bumps you, you bump them. Number 10, um, therefore, A, yes, uh, without being provoked, yes, it could. Uh, C, yes, and now C and D are the same thing. Uh, minor, strong, doesn't matter, any provocation. So A, yes, C, yes, D, yes, B, no, it's not to cause provocation, it's a response, okay? It's not the serve, it's the return, okay? Like in tennis, serve, return. Here we're talking about the return, not the serve. B is not part of the discussion. B is therefore the right answer because it's a negative question, not mentioned. A, yes, B, no, C, yes, D, yes. B, no, no is yes, yes is the, no is the right answer. Uh, number 11 was A, as I said. Moving on, number 12. Uh, well, let's go, uh, go to paragraph five now. First of all, um, notice the beginning, in contrast to, beautiful, good writing here, okay? A good writer gives you signs, directions, just like when you're driving down the street, you know, uh, you know, tells you, oh, turn left. Okay, next street, turn left. Drive 100 meters, turn right, like that. Those are directions telling you how to get to a place. Well, a writer gives you directions. So while you're reading, you know what's going on. And in contrast means an opposite, a change. Ah, so we've been talking about biological. Now we're going to go to the opposite here, learned. That's a signpost. And that's a bridge connecting you to the main thesis statement about various theories. We've looked at theories on the biological side. Now let's contrast. Let's go to the other side and look at theories 
from the learned or the nurtured side. Number 12 is therefore D. Transition means change. We're changing from one to the other. We're changing from nature to nurture. Um, social learning theories, okay, learning, uh, nurture, uh, view it as a learned behavior. Uh, now, what does it focus on? Role models and reinforcement, okay. Remember, look at the organization. Role models, reinforcement. Role models uh, mean, you know, somebody you follow, your, your father, your, your uh, mother, your teacher, your you know, uh, political leader, president, even policeman maybe is a good role model. Um, English professor. Okay, reinforcement means um, what happens when you behave a certain way. I mean, if you work hard and you work really hard in a class, uh, you get an A plus. It's like, oh, wow, I should work hard in every class. I'll get an A plus, positive reinforcement. Um, if you do something bad, you behave aggressively and you get punished. Hmm, I better not do that again. That's bad. I got punished. Negative reinforcement. Um, okay, this is a tough one now. It's a very long sentence. Research has shown that aggressive behavior can be learned through a combination of modeling, okay, role modeling, and positive reinforcement of the aggressive behavior, okay, uh, reward, positive reinforcement means reward, like A plus for something, uh, and that children are influenced by the combined forces of observing, watching, seeing. Children observe, they learn by observing. Aggressive behavior in parents, peers, peers means like equal, equal age, um, F uh, fictional role models, you know, in movies, uh, TV, books, and in noticing either positive reinforcement for the aggressive behavior or minimally, at least, minimally, at least, a lack of, no, none, negative reinforcement. What does all this mean? It means 13, uh, the answer is B, it means B. Children learn to behave aggressively, learn. Remember, this is nurture, social learning, not natural not nature, not innate. Learn to behave aggressively by witnessing synonym, synonyms. In the answer, look for synonyms. Witnessing, observing. To witness is to observe. Aggressive behavior that is rewarded, positive reinforcement, or at least minimally not punished a lack of negative reinforcement. All synonyms, a perfect restatement, okay? Uh, minimally, at least, a lack of, uh, not, and negative reinforcement, punished, okay? Finding the synonyms, finding the restatements, that's the key to answering these questions. Okay, number 14, um, behavior of a live model is more influential than that of a fictional. Live model, fictional. Behavior, behavior. Behavior X, behavior Y. So that of replaces the behavior of C, number 14 is C. The behavior of X as opposed to the behavior of Y, that of Y. On screen deaths, acts of violent behavior in TV shows, movies can be counted in the tens, hundreds, thousands, mo, 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 mo. Not in and of itself not in and of itself. First of all, sorry, 15 uh, is C, uh, works of fiction, okay? They're talking about TV and movies. Yeah, works of fiction, TV shows, movies are works of fiction, 15 C. Uh, 16, in and of itself means alone, by itself, okay? It's a bit of a formal expression, but we, we use it often, in and of itself, by itself, alone, or one hand. One hand means one person, single-handedly, okay, alone. I finished the job single-handedly. It doesn't mean I used one hand. It means just me, alone. Hopefully, I used two hands, but uh, I did it alone, by myself. Uh, okay, 17, I think that's, I think, an easy one. Critical is crucial, very important. And number 18, here, okay, right now, I'll tell you a real good clue. That first word, remember, look for the connecting word. Look for the clue. And here it's the first word, thus. Thus, mo, 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 mo. Thus means, therefore, 
So in review, this is a summary. When does the summary come? At the beginning? No, at the end. Thus, therefore, so is reviewing and summarizing and restating everything. It comes at the end, D. Number 18 is D. Okay, um, I didn't go over everything. Uh, it's just too, um, it's a lot, it will take a long time. But if you have questions about the reading, the expressions, the vocabulary, please ask me. Number 19. Now, this is where this comes in really handy. If you look at 19 and 20, here are your answers, right here, okay? What, what uh, 19 and 20, those bold sentences are the two main supporting points, the key points of the essay that support the thesis. Instinct learned, okay? Biological instinct learned, nature, nurture. There you go, and you find the answers here. Number two, with, and sorry, number two and number six, with or without outside provocation. Okay, number two without, and number six with provocation in response to provocation, two and six. Learned behaviors, over here. What does it say? Uh, one, rewards for aggressive behavior. Yeah, if my big brother behaves aggressively and I see him and he gets rewarded, I should behave aggressively too, okay? Uh, rewards or positive reinforcement. Um, number four, observe behavior of real people, my brother, my father, my mother, my teacher. And number seven, fictional people. Uh, you know, TV show, uh, movie, that kind of thing. So the first one, instinct, number two and number six. The second one, learned behavior, number one, four and seven. Okay, if I see aggression, and then the person is rewarded, the role model is rewarded, I, I copy it. If I see my brother behaving aggressively and there's no punishment, yeah, okay, nothing bad happened, so I'll follow it. Ah, but if I see my brother behave uh, aggressively and get punished, hmm, maybe I better not do that. But all three situations, I'm watching and I'm learning. Okay, it's being, I'm being nurtured in life. Number three, again, it's not to provoke, it's not to serve, it's the return. So number three is wrong. And number five, no. Uh, negative reinforcement, punishment. Again, if I see my, my big brother getting punished, I don't want to follow him. Number 20, uh, this passage discusses cause, causes of aggression. Well, what is the, this is now the main points. Number, number 19 are sort of the the smaller details down here. And number 20 are more the main points, the thesis and the key points of support. Again, you have them up at the top. Um, number one, aggression occurs as, occurs as a result of observation and reward, okay? Learned behavior. Number four, various theories indicate that aggression can, may occur with or without provocation. This is um, natural, innate. Okay, innate, number four. And number five, it may be instinctive or learned. This is the main point of the whole paper. The whole thesis statement is number five. So number five is the thesis statement. Uh, number four, it talks about um, natural, instinctive learning. And number one talks about uh, the behavioral uh, learning, the, uh, sorry, the learned behavior theories. So natural theories, learned behavior theories, uh, four and one, and then five is the main point. All right. Okay. So again, really what I want you to, I don't want you to eat a fish today, right? I mean, you did well on the test. You understand everything. That's great. You had a good lunch. You had a good fish. No, I want you to learn how to fish. And by learning how to fish is this, is learning how to recognize the writing style, recognize the organization, find the key points, Okay, and now you can catch fish on every uh, TOEFL um, uh, reading passage. Okay? That's the key. All right, great work, everyone. Again, you don't need to tell me your score. You know, I, you know, I, I want to know your times. When I ask you your time for homework, you, when you email me, that email has to tell me the time. I want to know that. That's part of your homework. Okay, I'm not judging you on it. I'm just learning about how you're doing. Um, you don't. 
don't, again, don't worry. If your score is low, your time is slow. Right? Don't rip up your book. Don't give up. Don't run away. No, you're doing fine. Okay. What we're going to do now is one thing I want you to do is remember your time and remember your score. Keep it. Put it over here on the side um, and keep it in your mind. And also remember your feeling. Hmm? How did you feel doing this? Oh, it was confusing. I didn't understand the reading. Uh, whatever. Whatever your feeling was, remember it. Put it back here in your brain and keep it there. Because I'm gonna, we're going to do another exercise like this in a long time, later at the end of the term. And I want you to remember that and compare it. Okay? It's not just comparing your score. It's comparing your confidence level, your understanding of TOEFL, the passages, the organization, the questions, the answers, all of that. Put that in your memory and bring it back later this semester. Okay, we've looked at the overview, so let's go right into skill one here. Vocabulary um, from uh, context. Now, we're going to start with uh, unit one, uh, skill one, which is the most basic reading skill. Okay? When you read in Korean uh, and you read a, you know, something academic or the newspaper, okay, you know, you'll see new words. You'll see words that I'm not sure what it means, you know, and... Um, do you stop and go to a dictionary? Well, hopefully not. Because when you read in your own language, you see the word and you read the sentence and you kind of go, okay, yeah, I, I get it. And you keep reading. That's what a good reader does. They understand vocabulary from the context. The context means the sentence or sometimes even the whole paragraph. The words around the word. Context literally means words around or with that word. Um, and there's two basic kinds of questions. One is a completely new word that you've never heard before. And the other is a word that has many meanings that you know. But the key is, what is the meaning in this context, in this sentence? Okay? All right, the moho. Uh, the dividing line between the Earth's mantle and crust is called the moho, which is short for mohorovicic discontinuity. Wow, difficult to say. Don't worry about it. It's not a speaking test. Okay, it's named for the scientist who discovered it. The mantle is the region of the Earth that extends from the outer edge of the core almost to the surface. It is 2,900 kilometers thick and encompasses about 84% of the volume of the Earth. Okay, what is encompass? Hmm, that's a new word. Well, the mantle encompasses 84% of the volume. The mantle encompasses almost all of the Earth. 84% is almost all. Therefore, it holds, it has, it includes 84% of Earth, or A, it contains, okay? It contains, 2,900 kilometers thick, contains 84% of the Earth. Number two, draw. Ah, that's not a new word. I know the word draw. Draw a picture, right? Yeah, okay, well, let's see. Using the reflection of seismic waves at thousands of different locations, scientists have been able to draw some interesting conclusions. Okay, um, so to draw a picture of, no, no. They don't really draw a picture, do they? No, so it's not sketch. Pull, draw, like pull, withdraw money, pull money out of your bank, withdraw money, or your desk, you pull, what is it called? Ah, a drawer. D-R-A-W-E-R, drawer, drawer, because you pull it. Hmm. Draft, yeah, sang mekju, you, you pull, no, that's not it either. No, this isn't like sang mekju, so it's to make a conclusion. Now, the key here is in context. You cannot answer this question without reading the sentence. So when you get a question like this, you see the word, read the sentence. 90% of the time, by reading that sentence, you can answer the question. So that's what I said last week. You look at the questions and you go, oh, this one I can answer quickly. Get it done. Encompasses. Read the sentence. Okay, it holds. It contains. Draw. Draw? Picture? No. Oh, draw a conclusion. Make a conclusion. You can answer these questions quickly by finding them in the story, in the passage, reading the sentence. Sometimes you have to read more than one sentence, the sentence before, the sentence after, but usually just the sentence that contains or encompasses 
uh, the, the word. Number three, to a considerable degree. Mo the moho varies to a considerable degree. Now, considerable here doesn't mean considerate or polite. It means a lot. To a considerable degree. It varies from very, uh, very deep to less deep, okay? A big, a huge amount, or significantly. Number three here is B, uh, significantly. Be careful. Considerately means politely, and it looks like the word considerable. There's a good TOEFL rule here. If the answers look too much the same, they're often wrong. It's usually a trick or a trap. Be careful. Okay, be careful. Uh, number three is B. Now, uh, a very important thing. Now, let me hit time out here. Hold on. When, let's go back, when we begin a new chapter, there will be 10 chapters, and each chapter will focus on one question type. Chapter one is about really the foundation, vocabulary from context. Vocabulary is everything. Without understanding vocabulary, it's very hard to read, especially academic reading. So you need to get better at learning vocabulary from context. You're gonna get questions every time. Every passage has these questions. Every TOEFL passage, every test, All right? So I will go over the um, introduction with you. I'll go over the examples, but you need to do them on your own. Okay? I do it on the video, I go over it, but you need to go back in your homework and read the introduction. Page 10, page 11, page 12. Read it. Okay? This is going to help. What I'm, what I'm doing with you is good, but to really uh, solidify it, you need to do it yourself at home. Then, and this is absolutely essential. Look at the shaded box at the bottom of page 12. Every, um, every chapter has this at the, in the introduction at the end. You must read it. This is really, really important. This really gives you the, the keys of how to go about answering this question, okay? First of all, identification. By the time our course is done, you will recognize every question type. Oh, that's a vocabulary question. Oh, that's an inference question. You're gonna read the. You're not gonna read the question and like, what? What is? What does it mean? What is the question? No, right away you're gonna know the kind of question, and this is gonna help you. Okay, the word X is closest in meaning to mo mo mo. The word X could be at best be replaced by now. Every time you see those phrases, in is closest in meaning to could best be replaced by, in your mind you go, vocabulary question. That's it. You know the question type. Where to find the answer? The context surrounding the word or phrase. Read the sentence with that word. Then how to answer it. Really good advice. This Every chapter, read this. One, find the word or phrase. Two, read the sentence. Three, look for context clues. Four, choose the answer. This will give you a system, a strategy for these questions. Okay, again, read that introduction on your own, but first, in our video, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through one passage, or you're going to do one passage for me. Passage one is called Smog. Okay, you're going to do it now. So here's how we're going to work. Uh, I'll say start, and you're going to hit the pause button, and then you're going to do the work. And then you're going to finish it, answer the questions, and then you're going to hit play, and you're going to listen to me explain it. We're going to do this all through the semester. All right? So do the smog uh, uh, passage, passage one on page 13. Read it. Uh, answer the five questions. You know, I'll give you, uh, let's say four minutes, five minutes. I'll give you five minutes. It's the first one. Try to finish in less than five minutes um, if you can. Then come back and I will explain the answers to you. Okay, go ahead. Okay, smog. What is smog? It's uh, two words put together. Smoke plus fog. Fog is natural. It's nature. It, it's, uh, a natu it's like a, a cloud. Walking in a cloud is fog. Nature makes fog. Smoke, that's man-made. Smoke is made by you know, cars and factories and, you know, that kind of thing. So smoke, man-made, plus fog, natural, is smog. And um, it's the oxidation of exhaust gases 
that causes this pollution. Uh, the brown haze that is poised over some of the world's largest cities. Okay, what is smog? It's poised over. Poised um, comes from the word, uh, or is connected to the word positioned. Like a, a, a baseball player is in position ready to hit the ball, uh, he is poised. Okay? He's in his stance or his position to hit. He's poised. He's positioned to hit. Um, in soccer, you know, on a, a penalty kick, a, a goalie, a goalkeeper is poised, ready for the kick, you know, in position. Okay? Therefore, number one is B, sitting, in position, sitting. Not poisoning, even though it does poison, uh, smog can be poisonous, and it's not blowing. If it was blowing over, that would be good. It would be moving. The problem is that smog doesn't blow it. It just sits there in position, sitting, poised over the city. Uh, number two, take place simply means to happen or uh, D, to occur, to occur. And uh, number three, to force is, is literally to push out, right? If you're forced out of the room, they push you out the door, they're being forced, okay? And the um, uh, oxide is pushed out of the tailpipe. The tailpipe is that the pipe in the back of your car where the, you know, the smoke goes out. We call that a tailpipe in English, tailpipe. Um, number four, it's a tough one. Hue really just means B, uh, sorry, A, A, sorry, color. Well, it doesn't mean the odor. You can't have a brownish smell. And it's a brownish smoke, but gas is smoke. It would be redundant. Gas with a brownish smoke, no. Gas with a brownish color, brown color. Okay, a hue means a color or a shade of a color. You can have blue and blue, but different hue of blue, different shades of blue, but it's still the color. Number four is A. And number five, uh, B, to serve a, a function. To play a role means to participate. Okay, now again, this is a word you know, right? Like, oh, an actor in a movie playing the role. Yeah, but not here. This is not about actors in movies. This is about science. Okay? And in science, when we act or we participate, we are serving a function. Okay? H2O, hydrogen and oxygen, are, are, they participate by reacting together to make water. They each serve a function. In, uh, they each play a role or serve a function in the creation of, of water. All right, uh, check your answers. Uh, you know, if there's any question, you can email me, of course. Uh, in, in the video, we will, we will do, each week we will do some of the practice exercises in the video, and the rest will be homework. So this week, homework. Page 14, 15, 16. Um, three passages. Passage two, autism. Passage three, parasitic plants. And passage four, Edna Ferber. I want you to do them for homework. Uh, notice that passage four, there's one question at the top of page 17. Then, so stop at the top of page 17 when you finish passage four, number 24, then stop. Reading skill two, recognize reference. I'm gonna do that with you next week. You don't have to worry about it, okay? Better that you wait. Let me walk you through it in the video next week. So the homework is passage two, three, and four. You don't have to tell me the, your score. You don't have to even take a picture. Some of you did, thank you, but it's not necessary. Just do the work and just tell me you finished the work and ask me questions, right? And if you have questions, that's all you need to do to get credit for homework and attendance this week. You don't need to tell me the time. Uh, time yourself, you know, try to finish each one in less than five minutes, but um, be less worried about time. Okay. With the practice exercises, I'm going to tell you at the beginning especially, timing is less important. Focus on the strategy. Focus on the technique of getting the answer. So if it takes a little more time in the practice exercises, that's okay. Focus more on getting a good technique or system down. Right? Don't tell me your time. I don't need to know. And you don't even really need to time yourself. It don't take two hours to do it, of course. But, hey. Okay. And next week in the video, I will, uh, I will review the three passages. That'll be our weekly sort of uh, system. I'll give you homework. You finish the homework. Tell me you did the homework. 
uh, ask any questions, and then next week, watch the video and review the homework with me. Okay, very good. Let's move on now. This week, we will start listening uh, comprehension. Please go to page 123. Um, the listening strategies are very similar to the reading strategies. Okay, as I told you, you will get um, six passages, uh, four um, will be uh, longer lectures in the classroom. They all take four to five minutes. It'll be usually a academic lecture or a seminar, that kind of thing, in the classroom. And then two passages will be outside of the classroom, student to student, um, student and professor, you know, in the professor's office asking questions or reviewing homework. Uh, and so on, or a student talking to an advisor or a uh, staff member of the university. But it's all university life based. Okay, so, and those ones are shorter. They're two to three minutes, and the longer ones are four to five minutes, more or less. Okay, be familiar with the directions, dismiss the directions. Okay, again, number three, don't worry if it's on a topic not familiar. Same as reading. If you see something like uh, today's topic is tropism. What is tropism? I don't know. Don't worry. Two reasons why. One, when you get a difficult word like that in the title, you're going to get a definition of that word right away, like aggression. Now, you may know that word already, but the definition and explanation was in the first two paragraphs. Same thing with listening. Okay, A, uh, a professor is lecturing on tropism. Don't panic. Oh, I don't know anything. What is tropism? It doesn't matter. What it does, what does matter is that you listen closely at the beginning for the definition of that word, because of course it's an important word, it's the topic. Uh, number four, listen carefully. Yeah, that's pretty obvious, I think. Uh, number five, ah, here's a good point. Use the visuals. Yeah, okay, when you see a picture, look at the picture and start thinking, really important. Okay, look at the picture and, okay, who's in the picture? Who is the man? Who is the woman? Which is, this? are they both students? Is it a professor and a student? Where are they? They're in a classroom, okay? Those visuals help you narrow down the discussion, okay? They give you clues. Okay? And so instead of thinking the, 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 the listening could be about anything, no, now we're narrowing it down. Okay, the visuals and the title. Think about the title. What does the title say? Narrow it down so as you listen, you are really focusing on uh, the specific subject or the specific, uh, whatever the specific talk is about. Who is it, where is it, what is it about? Okay, the more you focus before you listen, the better you will listen. Number six, very important, take notes, yeah. Now we're gonna talk about that, okay? Uh, actually, uh, sorry, we'll talk about that every week, week by week and you're gonna practice it and get used to it and get better at it. But remember the reading notes I gave you? It's a little bit like that, but you're listening. And as you listen, try to listen for the organization, listen for the key points. If it's a lecture, a lecture is like academic, uh, an academic passage. It's organized very clearly, it's organized well. You follow that organization, just like we did with the aggression passage. Number seven, don't worry today about number seven. Um, we're gonna, each chapter in the book talks about each question type. Uh, number eight, again, choose the best answer. It doesn't say the perfect answer. It doesn't say the right answer. It says the best answer. Sometimes there's no right answer that's perfect, but one of them is better than the others. Choose that one. Uh, number nine, yeah, think carefully. Number 10, don't waste a lot of time. And, and number 12, guess, okay. Yeah, don't leave any answers blank. If you leave it blank, it's wrong. If you just close your eyes and you circle A, you got a 25% chance that it's right. That's better than zero. And as I told you with reading, by taking good notes, by practicing, by learning the test, you know, just getting better, your guesses will be fewer and your guesses will probably be 50-50 because you'll be able to eliminate two. A is wrong. B is wrong. C, D, C. Well, now it's at least 50-50. You've doubled your odds. All right. Go back, please, to page uh, 1, 
two, oops, no, 118. Now, this is a homework also, along with the reading. Uh, your homework is to um, do the listening diagnostic pretest. There are two passages. One is the shorter uh, conversation outside of the classroom, and the second one is a longer uh, kind of seminar inside the classroom. This is how you will do it. Okay, first, um, listen to, uh, on. I think it's uh, number three, I sent you the files this morning. You will listen to the directions. Only today, I want you to listen and follow along. The What you hear on the CD is not always 100% exactly like what you see in the, uh, in the book, what you read, but an just answer the questions in the book, even if the wording is a little bit different. So listen and get familiar with the directions one time. Then on uh, file three, it goes right into passage one. So really important, don't turn the page until the speaking is finished. Okay, the conversation will be over after you know, three minutes, I think. Okay, so you look at the picture, problem with the class. Listen as a student consults with his advisor. Look at the picture. Well, the man is the student, the woman is the advisor. Okay, where are they? They're in the advisor's office, okay? And then start thinking about the title. Then listen, take notes. I recommend you take notes uh, right on the, you know, right on the page here where the pictures are. But don't turn the page. Do not answer the questions while you listen. You can't do that on TOEFL. That destroys uh, the practice that you must have. Okay, you must practice it like real TOEFL. Take notes, then turn the page and answer the questions. Then you can use your notes. Or you can also take notes on a separate piece of paper. That's fine. That's also good. Use those notes and listen and answer the questions. Good notes will mean good answers. Then the second passage, psychology, sleep. Okay, look at the pictures. Who are the people? Where are they? You know, what's going on? What are they talking about? Listen, take notes either on this page or on a separate paper, up to you. When the, the seminar is done, when the talk is over, um, uh, turn the page and answer the rest of the questions, okay? They're all on the, um, they're in your files, right? Do the best you can, yeah? Don't worry if you get some wrong, don't worry if it's difficult, confusing. Again, okay, I'm throwing at you a, a pretest here. It's a bit difficult, but it's a good example of TOEFL listening. Do your best, okay? And af after next week, we're gonna go back, we're gonna review it, give you, I'm gonna give you some good listening strategies, then we're gonna go back to the beginning and work our way back up again, just like we did with reading. Do not worry if it's a bit difficult. Do your best. This is all about practice and experience. TOEFL is all about learning the test. And while you're learning the test, of course, you're learning English too. All right, good work, everyone. That's all for today's lecture. Uh, please email me by Thursday at five o'clock. Always put your name, student number, and class number in the email. Uh, do the work the best you can. I don't need to know any of your timings or your scores. I just need to know that you got the work done and I need to know any problems or questions that you have. As always, I look forward to hearing from you. I love getting your emails. Uh, I answer you as soon as I can. Uh, I'll answer you back. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week, everyone. And I'll see you again uh, in next week's video lecture. Bye-bye for now.